Welcome back to the Cat's Eye News Wildcats. I'm Austin. And I'm Chris. Let's get into it. Masks are now optional at Nova High School. Please be respectful of everyone's decision and stay safe and respectful, Wildcats. Culture Interest Club will be meeting today after school in room 182. They'll be discussing Detroit black culture and snacks will be provided. All are welcome. So Japanese are maybe thinking of taking Japanese next year? Then check out the tutoring sessions after school with Palazzolo Sensei and Shuman Sensei. They'll be hosted on Mondays and Wednesdays until 3.30 every week. Novi High School can be a difficult place to navigate. Tommy and Austin give you some tips and tricks for Novi High School survival. Good morning, Novi. I'm Austin. And I'm Tommy. And today we'll be going around the school, showing you guys some friendly tips and tricks to hopefully survive high school that much easier. All right, starting us off with tip number one, the weight room here is open most days after school, so be sure to come down and get that pump in. Tip number two, establish a good relationship with Greg, because he's a super nice guy, and he will definitely help you out in the long run. All right, tip number three, the sub is a very good option here at lunch, but the line sometimes can get super long, so unless you get down here super quick out your fourth hour, I would highly recommend this style of line. Never too long, and always gas. Tip number four, when coming here in the morning, be sure to park relative to your sixth hour rather than your first hour so you can beat that after school traffic. Tip number five, and possibly the most important one on this list, be sure to check your student email daily because there's important information from counselors and administrators. That's it from us, Novi. Make sure to keep these tips and tricks in mind. And if you have any more, make sure to leave them down in the comment section below. Have you noticed our new and improved live broadcasts? Well, they have a very different process than the pre-recorded broadcasts. So let's go to Michael to learn more about behind the scenes. Oh, oh, wait a minute, Michael. Didn't you do this already? Yes. Yes, I did. But some things have changed. We're doing live broadcasts now, in addition to the pre-recorded ones. In these ones, you're recording just one take. There's quite a bit to cover, so let's get right into it. This is the room where everybody actually does the speaking. Let's see what one Cat's Eye News anchor has to say. I'd say the biggest difference with the live broadcast versus the pre-recorded ones is that you can't really be a perfectionist about like how you say things, which I kind of am, much to the annoyance of the people recording me. So when you're doing the live broadcast, you just kind of have to storm through it regardless of if you like cough or something. Like it doesn't really matter. You have to just keep going. I prepare for the live broadcast by, we basically just like go over the script a few times beforehand and then cross our fingers that the teleprompter is going to work because we don't have enough time to like memorize anything. So. You're just basically praying that it's gonna come through. So that's what people in front of the camera do, but what about the people behind the camera? Let's go ask two people in the back room right now. Well, I do audio for the, the live broadcast that gets our news and how it works is just, basically the mics are connected to a soundboard in the back room where the TriCaster is, and basically it's connected to a low soundboard, or actual low soundboard, and basically you just have to push buttons and we're in, and the uh, audio should come out now. Um, so I do TriCaster, I do audio, and I also do teleprompter. It all depends on the day. Um, for all those, basically, it's really simple. TriCaster is basically switching all the cameras and all the packages you see. Audio, it's just controlling mics and like when a mic is on and when a mic is off and like the volume of it. And then teleprompter is basically controlling um, the script and what the anchors can read like at a live pace right now that's broken so we're just doing a weird setup over there and we're just like having it on the google slides but it works out the biggest challenge for me personally is when the track catcher doesn't work because when the track catcher doesn't work i don't really know like when to like turn on the mics and turn them off usually the, the director in the back usually give us like a signal like five seconds ten seconds that way it's easier for me to know when the track catcher is not really working not really working it's kind of difficult for all of us i don't know the um, biggest challenge of live broadcast is definitely the fact that it's one, live, so everything can go wrong instantly and you have to fix it on the spot. And two, um, TriCaster, I'm not sure if you've ever touched the thing, but it's a, like a giant switchboard and it's 
chaos to look at. And I had to learn that in like a week. So sometimes I'm still just kind of messing up my like switches. So it's kind of stressful, but yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, now you have a better understanding of how we do things, both in front of and behind the camera. Thank you for watching, Novi. Thanks, Michael. Now let's head over to Adam for sports. Thanks, guys. Let's check out what went down this past week. Boys basketball took it to overtime versus Northville and managed to secure a victory. Tejon McGowan put up 17 points and Danny Gresham put up 14. Girls basketball also put, a, put up another win in the win column on Monday against Lavonia Stevenson. Figure skating had a great competition with the B team coming in fourth for jumps and spins, first in moves, and third overall. C team came in fourth in moves, fifth in jumps and spins, and placed fifth overall. Great job, Wildcats. That's all for sports today, guys. Now back to the desk. That's all for today, Wildcats. I'm Chris. And I'm Austin. Enjoy your short week, Nova.